Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with this amazing session that we have here for the next 25 minutes on helping learners discover career competencies through workshops and micro-credentials. And we have with us today the wonderful Dr. Nicole Miller from the University of Central Oklahoma's College of Business Student Success Center. And I will just give a full confession that Nicole and I are old colleagues, so we'll probably engage with each other on this call. And I'm a huge admirer of the work that's being done at UCO to really, I think, break outside of the mold of only offering academic coursework to students and expanding that and really looking at what do these people need to know, like to be adults, to be successful on the job. Uh, and again, I think your college of business and your team is just doing an amazing job at getting there. Uh, we are not joined today by Dr. Suzanne Clinton, but I do want to recognize that she's also a major contributor on this project as the Dean of Student Success, I believe, uh, within the College of Business. So it's it's just very exciting, I think, to see this alternative approach, uh, you know, really, again, helping learners be competent on the job, uh, you know, and in society. So Nicole, I'm gonna turn it over to you. If anybody has questions, feel free to drop those in the chat. I'll make sure that they get picked up along the way. Awesome, thank you so much, Brad. Brad and I worked together for many years before he went to the state regent. So he may, remains a very good friend. Thank you for joining me today. Um, and we're gonna be talking about helping learners discover their career competencies through what we do as student success workshops and our newly uh, created micro-credentials that we have as of the fall semester. So today I am gonna kind of just give you a, a overview. I'm gonna be as brief as possible. Feel free to ask whatever questions that you have and then I'll have a contact slide at the end. But we're going to talk about how we kind of designed these workshops, mm -hmm. how we promote them, and then how we sustain them. And then I'm going to give you kind of a brief mm -hmm. peek of like where we're at right now and where we're going. So um, you can see that this is still a, a labor of love and a, a mm -hmm. in progress. You know, it, it just it continues to evolve and, and get better as we go. OK. All right. So we have our mission and our vision in the Student Success Center in the UCO College of Business. So when I say Student Success Center, we do have a center that houses our advisors, our career development specialist, uh, marketing and development comes under there. And so do our student success workshops and testing center. So as part of the, the mission of the institution, and then we have the mission of the College of Business, we also created a mission and a vision for our Student Success Center. And the workshops are really touching upon that transformative learning component, specifically in the career guidance and personal and professional development pieces. So that's where we kind of situate within the mission and, and what, we're, what we're doing. So um, if you've thought about doing workshops before, uh, you may have had the naysayer come in like we did to say like, hey, we tried this and it didn't work for us, but good luck. And um, I generally like kind of love the naysayer because uh, I am a competitive athlete. And so <laughs> I always love to like work against the odds and stuff like that. You know, we always love the, um, the, the person, the underdog, you know, and those kinds of things. And so we really kind of took that to say, you know, it didn't work for them, but it doesn't mean that it won't work for us why didn't it work for them and how do we make it work for us? And so um, that was kind of the journey that we embarked upon to start with creating these workshops. So we began in fall 2019 with workshops. We decided to develop three different tracks for the workshops. So we have the college boss. And so those ones are centered around um, any of your workshops that would be like study skills, test taking, how to succeed as a college student. At UCO, we have a very large uh, first generation population. We have a lot of students um, in that population and others and not always in that population that just they don't understand how to be ready for school. Uh, they, they, they don't know what to do. And so we developed these types of workshops and I'll show you some examples in a minute to just kind of help them with some of those topics. Then we have the career doctor, which are all of our workshops centered on professional and career development. So your resumes, your cover letters, your um, interviewing skills, those types of things. And then we have adulting 101, which I lovingly like to, uh, well, I call it more of like the soft skills workshop workshops for um, 
you know, like emotional intelligence and those kinds of things. But I, I teach all of the ones in the adulting 101, and I pretty much just use all of the things that I messed up on to help students understand how to do that a little bit better or, um, you know, those kinds of topics. And then we have some other topics that during COVID, a couple of them got canceled, but things like how do you purchase insurance, like car insurance, homeowners insurance, renters insurance, these things where, you know, we're adults and we get out in the real world and we're like, holy cow, I had no idea how to do this. And um, I'm not taught that in school. So those are kind of the basis for the adulting 101 workshops. The folks who are facilitating them, you heard me say that I facilitate some of them. Um, our career counselor facilitates pretty much all of the career doctor ones. And then we often will have our advisors do a lot of the college boss ones. And uh, aside from the folks that are that I just mentioned, some of our faculty have led workshops. We've had alumni come back and lead workshops and um, be on student panels for workshops. And then we also have employers come and do workshops for us too. So this continues to evolve um, with the facilitation. If you're trying to figure out how to make this work with days or times on workshops, we coordinate with the person who does all of our scheduling for the college to ensure that we have um, the most students around possible, but not necessarily in classes. So we look for days and times that the schedule makes sense to offer these workshops, which generally tends to be kind of in the mid to late afternoon for us. And they run about an hour. So when we first started, we only offered in-person workshops and the naysayer was in my ear because we were having like six to eight students attending these workshops. And I'm like, okay, how do we keep getting more? All right, maybe we need to go online. And then COVID hit. And so we were like, okay, I guess we're just like flip flopping online with these things. And our attendance skyrocketed like 400%. It was kind of stupid. <laughs> um, we are getting 30 to 40 plus students in um, many of these workshops. Not everyone, but everyone has really pretty solid attendance for the most part. Um, so then we thought, okay, now we're back from COVID and we're trying to assimilate into life as normal. We have some students who really enjoy the face-to-face, -face, but we tend to get more in the online. So let's try hybrid. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, the person is in class with the students who want to come to class and they're also on Zoom with the ones who want to be online. That's how I'm, I'm defining that. And I'll be honest that it enables your numbers to increase, um, but it is a current, I don't know if conundrum is the right word for us, but something that we're trying to think through because while we like the face-to-face -face experience, the online does tend to attract more people to attend. But you know, if you've taught in that kind of format, it can be difficult to engage all parties in an hour long workshop and then try to facilitate all the Zoom and everything that's happening too. Um, it's also super awkward when nobody shows up in class and they're all online and you're like this big on the screen instead of, you know, and in the classroom and UCO has, has us tech ready now from COVID versus me just like I'm sitting in front of the screen with you right now. I'm bigger, I'm here, I'm present, I've got all my stuff in front of me and I can grab from it. And so um, then the flip is also kind of awkward to where you have like one student show up on class and then the rest of them are in the Zoom room and you're like, try not to just stare at that one student who's like breathing in front of you, but it's, it's awkward. And so we've been kind of going back and forth on what to do with these. And so that has brought us to some additional data analysis of our workshops to say, hey, which of these tend to get a lot of in-class students? Maybe let's continue with the hybrid like that so that we can ensure that our online students attend. Um, but which of these generally are only getting online attendance? Do we need to offer a face-to-face -face for that one? Maybe not this semester. So we're kind of in that place right now, figuring, figuring that out. Um, I told you a minute ago, and I'm sorry that I did not show you this, but I wanted to show you what some of our workshops um, look like because I showed you the menu. So we've got a whole bunch of different ones. So like when scholarship season is coming around, preparing presentations, planners, graduate school, stress, um, career fair prep and planning, internships, LinkedIn, um, all the career development topics uh, in the, 
adulting, like work-life balance, taking initiative, emotional intelligence, these types of things. And so people will often ask me, like, how did you know what to develop these workshops um, for? And we do a lot of research. So our research comes from um, NACE and uh, well, it's not the only place, but the National Association of Colleges and Employers. And so if you were to do just kind of a search for NACE, you would be able to find this is their most recent one that um, that we've been able to find so far in 2022 publication. But it'll talk about the, the top attributes that employers are seeking on a student's resume, for example. So these are really great for um, somewhere between the career doctor and adulting 101 workshops, depending on where they situate. So we want to look at those from NACE. But we also want to do some of our other research on any kind of industry standards, utilizing uh, feedback from any our, of our advisory boards within the College of Business of what they're looking for as employers. Um, students will write on their surveys that we give them at the end of the semester some different topics that they might be interested in. Or there may be just some things that we're seeing um, in, in the college with an advisement or the chairs or the faculty of like, man, our students really need this. And so that's really the impetus for how those workshops are being um, developed. And then I also like to attend a lot of different webinars that are happening in higher ed just to kind of hear what people are saying and where there's top needs. And then we look to see like, do we already have that? So I feel really good about what we have right now, but we have some things coming down the pike. Like for example, goal setting is a great one. And um, we're in the process of developing a new one for goal setting. So we try to just kind of think through all the different things. And then we also have to think through like, is this a workshop that we only offer in the fall or in the spring, or does it come around every other year? Um, and then we also consider the time of year with the particular workshop. So for example, like a college to career transition, we're probably going to put that maybe in a spring semester, kind of toward the end, let's just say um, mid to end, because those folks are about to graduate and transition, like more of them are than who graduate in December. Um, if we're talking about like study and test taking skills, maybe that's going to be front loaded in a fall semester because they're getting started and, and you kind of want them to get a feel for how the semester is going and then like, oh, shoot, I need some help. Oh, look, at, here's this workshop to, to try to kind of help you. Um, there are other strategic things that we do with workshops, uh, depending on the topic. So we had one of our employers did a networking workshop. And we have them, an amazing program in the College of Business called To Be Leaders, Bronco Business Leaders. These students work with um, faculty and industry mentors, and they put on a networking uh, event. And so I brought in an employer to do uh, topics on networking prior to the event so that they could get some practice learning about networking before the event and also to be used as a promo for folks to uh, register for the event, for example. Um, so those are some things from the strategic point of view. And then also strategically, and, and I'll talk about this in the next slide in a minute, because some of our classes use these workshops as assignments, we always connect and coordinate with the faculty who are teaching principles of management, for example, because that's our main one to say, when are your due dates for block one, block two, regular semester? And then we ensure that all of our workshops coincide with those due dates so that they're available. And <laughs> traditionally, they wait till the last minute to do the workshops. So if we know that we have workshops that are like, these ones are awesome. Students love these ones. Like they're amazing. Or we have this brand new one that we're like, this is, this one is going to work really well. Or we have an employer coming in. We will put those in what I like to call like the hot, the hot seat for um, where we think we're going to get the most attendance in those to ensure that, um, that they're heavily attended and stuff too. So there is some coordination that goes on there. We market them through um, our different calendars. So if you were to go on our, our College of Business website, you can find our student success workshops. We've got um, information there. We only have one left this semester, so that's why you're only seeing one here, but we have an RSS feed that pipes in information. It's also on the university's master calendar so that students can attend because it's really open to anyone. And um, it'll show them, like when they click on it, the event details and who they can contact and everything. 
We also will promote them through social media. So we'll um, create these um, graphics every semester, uh, something a little bit different to catch their eye that we have kind of the series of, of what's being taught and, and who's doing them. And we like to create flyers. And so we've got this nice little flyer with everything clickable. And we'll share that with the faculty at the start of the semester and ask them to share it with their students, encourage them to attend. Maybe they want to put it in their um, D2L, which is what we use for our learning management system. They want to put it in their D2L shell. So these are some of the ways that we're marketing. And we market through, I mean, a lot of other ways too. Like we have a newsletter that goes out. Um, the university's centralities, which is the, the daily um, email that we'll get from the university, we'll put stuff in there, word of mouth from professors, clubs and organizations, these kinds of things. So we're getting it through a lot of different places just to make sure that they know that these are available and they're free. The other thing I wanted to just mention on the workshops is after we do the workshop, we always follow up with a post-workshop survey or not survey. Well, yes, survey. I'll talk about that in a minute, but um, we do have a survey, but then when I get the students contact information from that survey, I will reach out to them individually after the workshop to say, hey, thanks for attending. Here's some reminders. So I'm going to give you kind of like a brief preview as I'm talking. So, you know, hey, um, everyone who attended, and this is a really long email. So it's one of those, like, if they want it, great. If not, delete it. It, it doesn't bother me, but here's some additional resources. I remind them of what the objectives were, give them some like things to think about, some additional resources. If it's part of our micro credentials, which we'll talk about in a minute, they've got that information on there. And then um, I also go in because we will let them ask us questions. Like what questions do you still have? And I keep everything anonymous, but I go in and like, let's say I teach this workshop three times. I just keep adding to it if there's something new. So they get all the past answers. And like I said, it's a lot of stuff and they can read through it if, if they want. Um, but they will get um, this email from me basically to say like, here's answers to your questions and follow up. And that gives them the ability to kind of look at stuff and see if they want to learn further about it. Okay, so shift gears just for a minute. Um, UCO has, um, I mean, we're all kind of doing transformative learning. I think that's a, a pretty uh, common word now, but um, we do the student transformative learning record and we call it stellar and we tag things. So well, some events or assignments or um, experiences can be tagged for um, one of our central six tenants. And so health and wellness, leadership, global cultural, service learning, civic engagement, it was six of them. Um, and they're at different levels. So they can be like exposure level where they're just kind of getting a feel for it. They can be integrating with it or they can like be like majorly transformed by it. So we are stellar tagging these. They generally will get exposure for those. Um, and that will happen after the workshop. So it is filtering into that transformative learning piece. And I do want to say one more thing here that the micro credit, so at a baseline, when they attend the workshop, it's that exposure level credit. But now that we have the micro credentials and they're actually having to do some additional stuff to submit artifacts, it's possible that we may be able to do some integration um, level tagging. And that's kind of like I said um, at the beginning, like I'll tell you kind of where we're at, where we're thinking. Um, that's kind of just come up recently for us to look at our rubrics and say like, is this something that could qualify for that next level? Um, so if that's something that you're doing on your campuses. Like I mentioned, we have a lot of faculty and employer support. So there's an assignment in principles of management that requires them to attend at least one workshop for one assignment. And then another assignment says you can attend a workshop or an on-campus activity. So the vast majority of our attendance is coming from principles of management, but we find that there are students who um, they'll they'll come anyway. So it's not necessarily a ton that are coming anyway, but it's it's a decent decent amount I think for what we have. Um, so we've in these numbers, all these numbers that I'm going to show you in the next few slides are from fall 2022, since we're in in progress on the current semester. So we've had really good student attendance. Most of them are our own majors, um, but still close to about 
um, outside majors and stuff. So they are getting some different exposure. And we, when we send the post um, follow-up survey, we administer that through Qualtrics and I have triggers set up to pipe in information that they submit so that it sends them an email confirmation of attendance automatically. So I don't have to sign all the little papers. Um, so they get that with their information piped in so they can share that with their faculty members. And we're doing well. I mean, there we ask them a lot of questions about like, how are we doing or how did the facilitator do? Um, you know, how was the workshop? Did you like this? Like what's happening? So we get good feedback and we require the feedback to get the attendance. And so we did not do that at the beginning, um, but we now require it in order for them to get the attendance for it. And so that gives us a lot more usable data that we can, can get information that we can use in reports and share about some of the, um, the impact that it's having. So these are some of the comments that um, we, our faculty, so uh, Dr. Clinton, Suzanne Clinton, she's my, my colleague um, who worked with me on this presentation, but she gets permission from students to share their comments that they write on their papers for her and principles of management. So these are some of the things that they're saying that they're taking away from the workshops or these aha moments that they're having with the content and everything. So it's always really great to see that they're making those connections and that they're finding it valuable um, to their learning experience. So the last couple minutes here, I wanna spend talking just about our micro-credentials. So we have two micro-credentials that are offered through Credly, um, our LX Studio and um, Carolyn, who, uh, oh, there she is, yeah, she was on this call, um, helped us to kind of put that together. And um, so we have five workshops go into each of the micro-credentials. Students have to complete the workshops. And then we'll send them a follow-up survey where they'll uh, put all their artifacts in that. And then we'll verify that they have it. And um, we'll send that information to LX Studio to award the micro-credential through Credly. Um, some of the things, for example, like the first one, the college to career tra transition, creating a knockout resume. So like they have to upload a resume, a cover letter. They respond to some of the top uh, three to five interview questions. Um, they have to think about the workshop and tell us what their strategy is gonna be. They have to share their LinkedIn profile um, for brand yourself. So these are the kinds of things that we're getting from them in the micro-credentials. And we have um, our first student who completed one um, coming very soon. We're, we're working on um, the survey, the intake survey is done for the micro-credentials, but um, I have a ward written up there because uh, our workshops were awarded um, UCO's Masonic Foundation Transformative Learning Award. We got first place this, this last fall semester. So it came with a $7,000 stipend for us to use, well, it's not stipend, it's not the word, $7,000 award for us to sew back into the program. So we hired an intern and um, she's working on putting together many different things for us. And one of those is doing a deep dive into our workshops. She's building a tool um, that would be through Power BI eventually to indicate where students are at in their progress toward micro-credentials when they're ready for us to send them a um, the survey for them to complete and so on and so forth. So that's kind of the, um, the award and some of the support that we have with this. And then the other place where we're going and the things that we're kind of working on is it's very difficult to do workshops that aren't just lecture. And it's very difficult when you have pop, uh, the group that's in class and online and like, how do you do all the things? And so we're working on streamlining some of our workshop content so that we can add more activities, but we have to figure out what activities are gonna make sense if we have folks in class and folks online, and like what's gonna be valuable to them. So that's really kind of the main topic of conversation that we're having right now is how do we start to kind of trim these so that we can have it feel more like a workshop rather than they're, they're coming to a class lecture. Um, okay, so I'm at, at my end of my time here, but I wanted to put my contact information up there on workshops. If you have more of like want some of the faculty input on how this um, works practically, um, Suzanne would be a great contact for you and, and we're happy for you to, to reach out to either of us.
Thank you, Nicole. Uh, I do have a question from Scarlett Figueroa from Seminole State College. I think she might like to make a visit to UCO and maybe observe one of your workshops. Would that be an option maybe for some of the attendees here interested in setting up a similar program? Yeah, so you are you can absolutely contact me and you can come in person, um, but you can also, um, if you want to view from home too, they are open to the public. And now is the question of work, uh, the micro-credentials is how are we tracking the people in the public who might be attend? And I'll have a better answer uh, for you for that at the next OKLIS OK presentation. Um, but anyway, you can go on to those master calendar places where I showed you a little bit ago and the Zoom link is in there. So if you ever want to just pop in and observe, you're more than welcome to. That's awesome, Nicole. I do actually have a question. <clears throat> I was looking at the list of courses where these workshops are assigned as a learning activity. And I noticed that the spread is pretty wide across the college business. You have ISOM in there, you have marketing, uh, you have management, but I noticed that economics wasn't listed on there. And I was just curious if there's been any exploration with those faculty or maybe uh, any kind of <clears throat> situation there where maybe why it's not been in that area. Sure. No, thank you for that question. So um, like I had mentioned, the principles of management is like kind of the, the fuel of this thing. And so these other one-off classes that we're finding, we're just learning about um, because Sonia, who we hired as our intern, started to do a, a deeper dive into our data to say like, what other classes are offering credit or attendance or something for attending these? And so that's a next level, next step piece that we're now looking into to say like, okay, who are these faculty and what are they doing? And then we would take it to that next level that what you're talking about right there is that's up to me now to now go talk to the chairs to say, hey, what do you have in your curriculum that can do this? The other piece of this too is we've been looking at um, our objectives in our course syllabi and considering just course uh, just the courses in general and the skills that are coming out of these classes and um, some of the ways that we might even be able to have more micro credentials in various areas, which I know you, me, and Tracy have talked a lot about. Um, and I think you're going to start to see some more of that stuff coming, but I feel like it's like sort of a slow process um, because we want to be really careful with not, not offering so many micro credentials that the degree becomes invaluable. So it's like, how do you um, create complementary situations. And so like some more of the micro credentials that might be coming, we're looking at some of the more like call it the easy ones or whatever, but like stuff that's already in existence. So something like HR, something like um, finances, something like um, entrepreneurship, those to me are a little bit more of the low hanging fruits with the economics. I think that would be interesting later to figure out like, what is it that we could do or what workshops um, and Travis Roach is wonderful and does a lot of uh, various workshops and stuff for the, the industry. So um, thank you for that comment, because I think that would that would be interesting. That's really just that's the answer in a nutshell. No, just really I think that's done great. It yet. Yeah. And I mean, same thing with accounting. You know, I think that they're kind of technical in nature sometimes. Yeah, you know, they're very specific outcomes. They have to meet with those programs. But it could be exciting, I think, and kind of an interesting conversation to get some workforce partners with faculty. For sure. In there as well to talk about those competencies, because maybe they're being overlooked to a certain extent. Yeah, I um, know. I think it's great. Emphasized. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome, Nicole. Any other questions from the audience before we go ahead and conclude the session for today? All right. Well, thank you again, Nicole. And you actually have the end button on your Zoom window there, if you don't mind closing us out. And thank you, everybody, for attending. We'll see you back at one o'clock for the rest of the afternoon sessions. Thank you.